All right. First rule of the channel. We not talk about the channel. Second rule of the channel. This is not legal advice. So this is going to be the 2024 fantasy football offseason preview for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, this one hopefully should be quick. There's not too much stuff to really uh, speculate on. Um, what you see is what you get for the most part when it comes to the Cowboys. So last year they finished third in uh, passing yards, 14th in rushing yards. We'll get into that a little bit, uh, losing uh, Tony Pollard. Uh, first in points, four. So uh, the biggest thing is always remember uh, in fantasy, I am not drafting uh, last year's production. I am drafting this year's ranges of outcomes. That means unless we can tell the story, guys are just as likely to take that quote unquote step forward as they are that step back. So for the most part, when you're looking at the, the Dallas Cowboys, um, I'm probably thinking like I'm I'm drafting safe um, because, you know, expecting that plus or minus um, they're going to give me what I'm expecting and there's not a lot of surprises to them overall. So Dak right now, I can pull this up. He is my quarterback six. He's going uh, eight on fantasy pros. I can pull this up um, on underdog. He is going uh, nine um, 87 ADP. Um, fantasy pros, he's quarterback eight, 62 overall. I think that's relatively in line with him. Um, the one thing that I would say about my rankings as I was getting ready to go live on this one, he is my quarterback six. Um, the one thing that I think hurts him a little bit is that Zeke resigning that the Cowboys did may cut into his ability to have like higher rushing touchdowns on the year. Cause that's probably what they're going to bring Zeke in to do is just fall into the end zone. So uh, the expectation that he could maybe push himself a little bit higher is relatively capped. You're probably buying more of the ability to take a step forward in the passing game, something closer to uh, the 2019 season where he had 4,900 yards passing and 30 touchdowns, like something along those lines. If we can get uh, some type of positive progression in either passing yardage or passing touchdowns, he led everybody last year with 36 passing touchdowns. Like uh, maybe there's a little bit more to that range of outcomes. Maybe this is going to be like, you know, the ceiling, you know, that that's what I would be expecting overall with Zach or uh, with Dak. I was thinking about maybe moving him down to what would essentially be quarterback nine with Jordan love and, and T law and Justin Herbert. The reason why I wouldn't do that is because uh, Jordan love Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert were expecting to take a you know step forward from last year. You know, that positive regression to the mean and with Dak, we're either expecting to get exactly what we got or for him to move up uh, to the next next year because he gets that increase um, in passing efficiency or passing volume. So keeping him with a, you know, Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow and then putting Dak in that tier, the bottom of that tier, you know, that's the way I would look at it. So, you know, if if I'm looking to target like a Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow, you know, the consolation prize being Dak within that tier is fine. You know, if if. If I want to move Dak into that tier with uh, Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, and Justin Herbert, like I can understand that also. Um, I would probably tend to keep like Kyler and Anthony Richardson, Jaden Daniels, like together and view that tier as the guys that could win me a league or they could probably like, you know, not win me a league at that rate. So uh, Dak is just going to be a guy that I'm going to expect to, you know, get somewhere between like 18 and 20 points a game. And, you know, I'm going to probably have to spend the draft capital to go up and get him. So, on uh fantasy pros again like that's that's where he should be going right around 62 if he falls to me here i'm happy you know you can see that joe burrow is right next to him so you know pick your poison at that point with those two guys if that's the way that you're going to go and then you're sure going to have the consolation prize of kyler murray espn leagues he's going 64 overall which is in line and i would rather have uh anthony richardson probably at that point because of that upside CJ Stroud, I think, is a little overvalued here. And then Joe Burrow. So, again, you're in that stack of, like, you know, if, if that's where you want to be drafting a quarterback, that's what you'd be looking at him to get. You know, if he falls around at that point, you know, you still have your Kyler Murrays uh, if you want to. If Kyler Murray's not available or he falls to me, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Again, sometimes, like, same process will win me a league or lose me a league. Sometimes just punting is okay. And Dak's probably in that line of, uh, you know, just generally going to be a pump, punt more so than winning me anything overall. Let's see. Moving on. If, if you're interested, Cooper Rush is back. Um, two years ago when he had to step in for Dak, he was serviceable. You probably will keep most of your toys in, in line if you need to go uh, go that direction. If Dak goes down again, probably the bigger thing is going to be that contract issue that's going on with Dak. And that's just something, you know, if I hear anything that makes me think that there's some shenanigans, I would be worried about that. Otherwise, like, yeah, I'm just expecting high volume passing offense with a lot of scoring and Dak's going to be at the helm. Uh, moving on to the running back room. Uh, Zeke re-signs, not a lot of money, $2 million. It says, well, $1.75 million guaranteed. 
are expecting a very low efficiency season, a part of a good offense. Like that's what I'd be guessing. So you're going to get the check down monster stuff. Um, maybe the possibility that he is the goal line back, which you can have this like really inefficient type season. Like James Conner did a couple of years ago where he had like 700 yards rushing and 15 touchdowns. Like that's what I would be thinking with Zeke overall. If, if I'm looking to pull the trigger on him, he is going and I can pull this back up. He is going, uh, on Fantasy Pros, running back 36, 109. Let's see if I can pull this one back up. And there's probably just better guys in this area. You see, like, uh, my boy, Lad McConkey. I'd be rather pulling the trigger on Zeke at this point. I don't know how Zeke's going to win you a league. Maybe in those, like, zero running back, like, hero running back type of builds. Like, maybe I'd be looking at, like, this really icky uh, Zeke pickup. I, I don't know um how how I would I would view that overall on fantasy pros he's going like pick 102 running back 34 again I have Zeke at, at uh, running back 32 the whole of the Dallas Cowboys running back room is running back 32 until we can figure out where some of the other running backs what their situations are I was thinking specifically like Zach Moss and uh Chase Brown like if I want to split those two guys at this point um they're they're combined as one running back so in this case with like these running back rooms like Zeke's probably going to end up staying around like running back 32 plus or minus even when I start splitting guys uh and he's just going to get pushed further and further down the board based off of like I'm probably going to be more interested in some of those like lottery tickets like your Trey Benson's or something like that that I am going to be Zeke the other guy that I you know I don't know why if I'm trying to win a league, I don't know why exactly I'd be going after Zeke when you have uh, on ESPN, where's it, Blake Corum? I was looking at this before I went live. He's going way down here right there, like uh, running back 46, 138. I would imagine Blake Corum has a chance with the split backfield to put up more points than Zeke because Zeke's going to be very inefficient at this point. So, like, again, I don't know how he gets you there. Um, Rico Dowdle is going uh, 169, running back 53 on ESPN. Fantasy pros, he is going uh, 144, running back 46. And then on my underdog shares, he's going 141, running back 43. So if there's a guy that I'm throwing that lottery ticket at when it comes to the uh, Cowboys, it's going to be Rico Dowdle. So last year, he was a little bit more efficient in his limited work. Um, he was kind of splitting a little bit of time with Tony Pollard at certain points in the season. I don't love him but they were also getting him design passing work. So the two things that we want, like he may get uh, a little of both, you know, some of the red zone work, a little bit of the design passing work. The bigger issue with all these running backs is if uh, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn comes back and he is the guy that they are using in the design passing work, it's going to entirely destroy all the running backs having an ability to really like win you anything. Um, and that's what I would be looking at. We're running back by committee. And then you still have like Royce Freeman that they brought in another uh, like trustworthy guy. He spent some time with the Rams last year uh, when Kyron Williams went down. So if if all four of these guys make the roster, um, I, I would probably even move the entirety of this backfield down further once I spar uh, start splitting backfields, because I don't know how any of them win me a league. Uh, other than like hoping I get Zeke falling in the end zone um, or maybe Rico Dowdle's the lead back and the other guys have like specific roles. Again, that's going to cap an upside with Rico Dowdle and then Deuce Vaughn may end up having like the most week to week value because he's the the you know, passing down back, the, the design receiving work guy. Like that's how ugly the backfield is going to be for the Cowboys. And that's generally bad because I want pieces of good offenses and the Cowboys, like I would imagine – third in passing yards, you know, first in points for like, I want pieces of this. I just don't want any pieces of this backfield. All right. Moving on to the wide receiver room, uh, CD lamb, you know, I shouldn't have to explain this. He is my wide receiver one. He is number two on fantasy pros, uh, uh two overall wide receiver one. Also on uh underdog, he is going at uh two ADP. He is wide receiver one. This is not surprising to anybody. He is going four on uh ESPN wide receiver one. My thoughts on CD Lamb are basically like if if you're in that position to have like the one zero one, your your thoughts would be like C, CMC at that age, uh, Brees Hall's upside, the safety of CD Lamb, and then the shiny thing of Bijan. That's what I'd be looking at. So if I have the one zero four and CD Lamb falls to me, like I'm not upset. You know, if if I have the one zero zero four and any of those other guys fall to me, like I'm not upset. Like that's just the long and short of it. If you're drafting CD Lamb. Again, you're not expecting to get last year's production. You're expecting to get this year's range of outcomes. I think it's actually higher because of you know what's going on with the wide receivers, the other receivers. Like I could definitely see him pushing 
200 targets and, you know, having an increase in efficiency and, you know, having, you know, a legendary type season. If he didn't have, a, you know, a legendary type season last year, like I could see there is more blood to get out of the stone, Um, more, you know, again, more targets, more efficiency, that, that type of thing. So I could see that happening. I could also see that negative regression for reasons. And you're looking at closer to like that 2022 where you did wide receiver six, uh, 1300 yards, nine touchdowns. I could see that happening. You know, unfortunately, if I'm pulling the trigger at like the 101 or 104, something along that range, and I get wide receiver six, yeah, it, I probably busted at that spot. It's probably a little bit closer to a push because like expecting that I'm going to get these legendary or super elite seasons from some of these guys at that high end range is probably not the best idea. Again, those guys at best are going to be, uh, you know, uh, even money bets to you know, break your heart or to give you what exactly what you're paying for. That's what I'd be thinking with CD Lamb. Probably the safest out of the bunch to give you, you know, as close to the ability to make place playoffs uh, because he's a wide receiver. The rest of them are running backs. All right. So moving on to Brandon Cooks, I have him. Let me see if I can find him real quick. I have Brandon Cooks as wide receiver seventy. I think there's a fringe chance for him to be like somewhere around uh, somewhere around the range of a low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three because of that passing volume. He is going to be 31 this year, so that's something to be paying attention to. On uh, fantasy pros, he's 136, a wide receiver 56. Again, I think that's a little high because there are probably other guys with higher upside that I would rather be throwing a dart at than 31 year old Brandon Cooks. That is uh, probably going to be the number two in this offense at best. Like, you know, even if CD Lamb gets injured, I imagine he's still going to be the number two in the offense. So that's just generally how I would think about it. On uh, underdog, he's going 130, uh, wide receiver 80, I think it is, something along those lines. Uh, and then ESPN, he's going at wide receiver 66, uh, 180 overall. I don't know how he wins your leagues. I, I don't know uh, why anybody would be bringing him in. That would be just me. You see right here on ESPN, uh, uh, he's going 180. I probably would throw my dart at a, a, a Donnie Mitchell at that point. Or there's uh, Jalen Polk. You know, you have uh, Baker from New England. Those guys I would have more uh, interest in because of their ability to win me a league than going out there and trying to stretch on all of that. 136 on Fantasy Pros. I mean, there's Jerry Judy. We could tell the, the the story how Jerry Judy is the number one in that offense. I don't know how we could do that with Brandon Cook. And there's a few other guys down here that I probably would be it's like Josh Palmer, 145 for the Chargers. Um, probably has a better chance to finish with a better season. Uh, Khalil Shakur has that story to finish as the number one attached to Josh Allen. I just don't know how you do that with a 31 year old uh, Brandon Cooks. You know, maybe in deeper leagues where you're you're scraping the bottom of the barrel because you need like that wide receiver three production. You're a three wide receiver, uh, you know, eighteen man, three wide receiver leagues or something like that. He's gonna have value. I could definitely see that he has the ability to take a step forward. He did finish um, rather strong at the end of last year with these uh, touchdowns. Again, chasing touchdowns is a good way to win leagues. It's also a good way to lose leagues at that point. Um, moving on, Jalen Tol Tolbert. He's the guy that I bet is going to be the other outside wide receiver, I can see that Brandon Cooks is going to play like the Z. Uh, Jalen Tolbert probably going to get those X uh, snaps. Uh, CD Lamb plays a lot out of the, of the slot, so these other two guys are going to allow him to move in there and do most of his damage. So, like on paper, Jalen Tol Tolbert is going to be the number three, but I could definitely see like in real life, or excuse me, on paper I could see he's going to be the number two, but in real life he's going to be the number three. And then uh, Ryan Flournoy is the six-round draft pick from uh, Southeast Missouri State. I don't know anything about him. The only reason why I bring this up is I could definitely see that there is a uh, vacated opportunity for a wide receiver in Dallas. And normally a six-round pick I don't care about. But I looked at the rest of the wide receiver room. And if it ain't Jalen Tolbert, like he's got as good a shot as anybody in this offense. But, you know, expecting that we can get uh, somewhere between 160 and 200 targets for CeeDee Lamb. I don't know if any of these guys matter. All right. So moving on to the tight end room to finish this off, I think we're going at a pretty good clip right now. Uh, Jake Ferguson, I have him at tight end 10 on uh, Fantasy Pros. He's going at tight end 10, 100 overall. I think that's a steal uh, on Fantasy Pro, or excuse me, on Underdog, he's going tight end 9, 85 ADP. I think that's a little bit better. And then on ESPN, if I bring this up real quick, he is going as uh, tight end 87, tight end 9, or excuse me, 87 overall, tight end 9. I think that is uh, better. What my thoughts are on the tight end position in general are uh, 
he's either ridiculously undervalued. And at this point, like he may end up being my number two tight end on my, my list that I will do at the end of the year because of that value on ESPN leagues. If Kyle Pitts is going underneath Jake Ferguson, I will probably be looking at Kyle Pitts. That's, that's a little retarded to me overall, but you know, Hey, that's what people do. And then a uh, hundred on uh fantasy pros, Jake Ferguson, like in this range, like I'm, uh, that's a pretty easy smash to me. Uh, overall so yeah that's what I would be thinking and then with him going there I would I would imagine that the tight end position over the summer is going to have to compress because like again if you're looking at a guy that probably has uh, and I would put my mean on Jake Ferguson as being the number two in the offense to be around like 900 yards I pulled this one up to be about 900 yards and seven touchdowns so last year he did uh, when he finishes tight end eight he did 100 targets 71 receptions 761 yards and five touchdowns. It led all tight ends and red zone targets. So me expecting that he's going to get two more uh, receiving touchdowns and about like 140 receiving yards over the course of the year where he's probably going to be acting as the number two in the offense. Like that's what I would be expecting with him. He's going at tight end 10. I think there are guys that have higher over underlines, I guess you could put it at like higher ranges of outcome ceilings. That's the word I'm looking for than Jake Ferguson. But at the cost, it's going to get me to have a guy that's probably going to give him, buy me a few weeks from the tight end position. Like, I really like this. There's only going to be a few guys, and I can bring up my rankings so I can talk about this. There's only going to be a few guys um, from the tight end position that are going to have the ability to be even the number two in their offense. And that's what Trey or Jake Ferguson is going to be at a tight end 10. I do have Kittle above him. There are a few other guys that like I'm less interested in, but I have to put them there like Evan Ingram, even like David Njoku, who I would have over Ferguson. I think Ferguson is, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, if I'm pulling the trigger on him, I know I got a good safe pick. It's a punt with some upside. That's what I really like in fantasy if I can do that at their cost. Um, the only other thing to kind of talk about this is Luke Schoonmaker. He is the 2023 second round pick for the Cowboys. So Jake Ferguson's like a 4 7 seven forty guy. Like Luke Schoonmaker is a 4 6 one forty guy. He's a tight end out of Michigan. So, I mean, he you know, he's a he's a run blocker with good athletic measurables. Um, Dynasty-wise, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stashing Luke Schoonmaker. Uh, Third-year breakouts coming up in a, in a year. I, I can imagine with the draft capital they put in the Schoonmaker, like they could let Jake Ferguson walk if they want to. Um, that would be what my thought process would be with Schoonmaker. The other thing is because of the lack of uh, – Wide receiver depths, I could definitely see that the Cowboys are at a lot of two tight end sets. Schoonmaker is likely not going to be uh, you know, fantasy relevant this year. I could see a way that the Cowboys in a lot of two tight end sets. We have seen you know teams be able to support two tight ends. The bigger issue that I would bring up with Luke Schoonmaker is um, my over underline on Luke Ferguson or Jake Ferguson being 900 yards, seven touchdowns may actually be a little high. Because if they're basically going to turn the tight end position into uh, you know a running back by committee, like a split a split room, and these guys are splitting it, like I'm expecting it was going to go on with the Packers, that would drop the overall over underline of Tony for or Jake Ferguson and um, allow Luke Schoonmaker to eat into him a little bit more. That would be my probably my biggest problem. So if I if I start hearing about like how much you know the hype train on Luke for uh, Luke. Schoonmaker is going to be for the Cowboys. That may end up affecting Jake Ferguson, even though I think he's going to be really special being the number two uh, option attached to a high volume passing offense this year. So anyway, I think that's all I got for the Cowboys today. It was relatively uh, squeaky easy. And I think tomorrow is going to be the Dolphins.